I'm a visual artist and I work in um, sculptural media predominantly. So my focus is on ceramics and mainly I focus on um, kind of religious, kind of cultural and social politics, homosexuality, race and gender. And I produce various kind of anthropomorphic deities, kind of phallic totems and installations that function as a kind of, kind of new age queer mythology that appropriate various symbols. The way I produce work is predominantly in a series. So I'll start by making a lot of things essentially. So my thought processes and my planning processes are really um, realised through my hands as opposed to kind of digitised formal like you know crazy computerised thing. Um, I'll start ma making a few things usually um, of a smaller scale so things like maquettes to basically work out some of the formal some of the ways the project will be realised physically. But then a big part of um, producing a body of work, so I'm pretty, I've been pretty lucky in the last couple of years, I've kind of had shows to work towards um, constantly, and with each of those shows come various um, size restrictions, dimension restrictions, as well as kind of really basic things, like if the show's going overseas or going to Melbourne, um, I won't make some ridiculous crazy thing that can't fit in a crate or will need like 20 straps to make it not break. So all these kind of logistical um, aspects that influence the kind of work I'll make for a particular space. But really, because all the work I've made in the last, say, year and a half have been going towards specific projects, I'll usually have a small plan about how many works I want to produce for that show, how many works I want to produce for that show, and then produce a large series of work that can be shown in each of those spaces and produce maximum impact, I guess. A lot of my work is based, the aesthetic is more of an anti-aesthetic, so I'm really interested in the ways, I'm really interested about from a formal and material and technical perspective when things don't work. Um, so a lot of the time I'll put a work in the kiln and I think I've set it right and then I'll open it and it just looks like shit. So, and there's always a way to resolve it rather than thinking, I think the most important thing and a way to deal with patience and failure is to be flexible. Um, so the way I work is I never really have a vision of the end product. I might have a really ugly drawing that kind of is an abstract vision of the end product. But if it comes out of the kiln, I always think, what can I do to this object um, to either resurrect it, to either put it through another process, or, and a lot of the time it turns out heaps better. Like I remember once this, with the glaze, I remember I had an exhibition and someone stepped on one of the ceramic works on the floor and it just broke into all these little pieces. And I just got some um, fibre glue, which is a ceramic glue that you put in the kiln, glued it back together, shoved all this glaze on top of it, put it back in the kiln, it was back together and it looked heaps better. Like it was brighter, it was more interesting kind of from a formal perspective. Um, so failures are really, because I have to let go a little bit because a lot of the work is dependent on the technology I use. When I say technology, I really mean firing. So kilns and I don't know, most people wouldn't have much direct kind of experience with those kinds of failures, but I always have to be like, let's be flexible. Um, let's keep going. I've glued works together. Like I've had two works might look shit. Can I say that? Yes. <laughs> Look bad. Um, but anyway, oh, I might not really like them. And all I do is I get some Araldite, two-part resin, glue them together, and I've got a really good work. I think it's a really good work. I'm happy with it. I'm happy to show it. Deciding whether a work's good or bad is a, sometimes a weird process. Um, I, it, I know it's not really fashionable to say this, but often I'll go on intuition. So how does it, do I feel if it's a good work? You know, and most of the time, I'm not right all the time and I'm not wrong, not that I can verify that with any, you know, evidence, but I've had works like, I call it the Ramesh bargain bin and I put it at the bottom of my stairs in my apartment and it'll, I'll just say, please take one. Then my neighbors will just take some. Then I remember once um, I had a box and it was full of like stuff to throw out. And then this collector came for a studio visit and he just looked through the box and ended up buying like three works from my bargain bin box that was actually going to go down to the bin. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So it's, I think a lot of the time, um, deciding what's good and what's bad, um, it's hard to be objective. So getting advice from peers and opinions and other people you trust, whose work you like, um, is really important in order to keep some sort of objectivity. But I don't know, I guess patience is pretty good. I have to be patient all the time because some of my ceramic work takes four weeks to dry before I can put it into a kiln. Then I'll have to book the kiln. Then I have to call two friends to help me carry the 60 kilo work down the stairs. 
and then I have to let go of it because it, I'll be driving it when it has been fired to a kiln in a van and it could just break and fall in the van. So the whole time I just have to keep, stay flexible and just go with everything. Um, and I think that's really important for, to develop a new imagery, um, new kinds of um, like, I guess, because I think the way that people work, all of the time I've noticed people work is quite formulaically. They have a scale, a kind of shape, a kind of size that they're comfortable with. But as soon as the mistakes happen and you have to work with it, um, I think that's the site where surprise, surprise and um, just new physical things can be realised in the studio. And that's where experimentation comes. I'm always on the hunt for um, new glazes, um, new ways I can assemble the works. If you can spend lots of time in the studio and get really involved in the community at art school, um, just doing that, so making and really focusing on the work and being engaged in the community, really does radiate opportunities from when art school finishes. That's what I'd say. I think the main thing to realise is that art doesn't just exist in art school. So just like any career, you need to kind of have a constant awareness of what's happening in the field. So I always try and maintain my awareness of what's happening um, by making an effort to go to openings, um, go to talks, going to see all the major exhibitions. If I have a day, if I'm in Paddington, I'm waiting for, two, for an hour, if a friend's late, I'll just Google and I'll know where all the galleries are. I'll go and look, um, talk to people. And I think it's important to even if it's like one publication, find one that you like and read it. Um, we can flick through, you can flick through the pages as much as you like, and that's good. <laughs> but reading some articles is really important as well. So just realise the critical discourses that are occurring. A really integral part of my studio practice is applying for grants, prizes and residencies. And for me, a day of applying writing applications and relevant prizes I consider a studio day, it's part of the business practice um, that I implement. I always keep in mind when I apply for grants and prizes and things, the strike rate is always going to be relatively low. Um, so, but last year I was um, privileged enough to be awarded the 2014 New South Wales Visual Arts Fellowship Emerging. The fellowship is initiated through Arts New South Wales and Artspace produces the exhibition, um, so the finalist exhibition. Um, so winning that means I get to plan a self-directed program of professional development um, at the value of $30,000. And this includes mentorships, international travel and the production of new work. So I'll be doing a residency in Korea with Bibu Srivlasa, um, which will involve a mentorship for a month working work and showing some work in the um, Clay Arch Gimhae Gim Museum in Korea. Winning that was quite a surprise, but it was a good <laughs> affirmation of what I was doing at the same time.